We're going to run through a problem on using Excel to do nonlinear regression. So just come to apmonitor.com slash CHE uh, 263. Um, okay, and then what we want to do is come down to um, the Excel and VBA section and click on data regression. Okay, now the first example is a linear polynomial regression. Then the second example is going to be the nonlinear regression. So let's just go ahead and uh, download this. Okay, we're going to go ahead and open that. And then, um, you know, if you want to, you can extract all. And then just extract that to any folder that you'd like. Okay, so we're going to start with data. If you'd like to, you can just look at the solution as well. But um, go ahead and just open up data. That'll be the starting point. And uh, we'll start working with this file. Um, okay, once it starts, once it opens. Um, so what we're going to have is just some X and Y data. And then we'll fit, um, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and fit, um, okay, and enable editing. Um, okay, so we have this X and Y data, and here it is uh, on the right plotted, and then we're going to come up with an estimated value as well. We think that it might fit um, this correlation right here, A plus B divided by X plus C times natural log of X. Okay, and so let's just go ahead and uh, create an estimated value. I have here um, some actual values for A, B, and C, um, but then we're going to try to come up with estimated value. So let's just pretend we don't know these three right here and um, maybe we're going to try to estimate those from the data. Okay, so um, I'm going to say that's A plus and then uh, one of the things you'll see is when we drag down we need C5 to be um, a constant reference. Okay, so let me just um, let me go ahead and just zoom in on this just a little bit more so we can see. Um, so I'm going to say this is equal to, and then I can select the C5 reference, which is the A, the estimated A. And if I hit F4, um, then it will put some dollar signs in there for me, or I can type those in uh, manually. Okay, and then when I drag down, it won't move those references as I drag it down. Okay, so I'm going to add, um, and then it's going to be this... Uh, C6, but put the dollar signs in there, or you can hit F4. Um, and then that's going to be divided by, and I'll take my measured X, um, and then plus, and then I'm going to select C, that's going to be C7, or I can type it in as C7 times a natural log of um, X as well. Okay, so there's my um, correlation, and if I um, double click this uh, okay so if I have this right here and then I double click this little box in the right it'll fill it down and uh, let's just go over to our plot and see um, what those are we don't have those yet what I did is I for Y estimated I um, created a new value of X so you just want to test the correlation at 5 to 100 in increments of 5. Okay, so I'll take this same correlation right here. Um, let me just go ahead and select that. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Just do a control C and then uh, you can select so I gotta, uh, just hit enter there to keep the formula and then I'll enter that in here but instead of this X over here I'm going to use this X plot. Okay, now again, this is just our correlation, just so we can visualize it um, and see what our correlation is doing. Okay, so again, just double click um, this on the right. See if I can get that to work. It does not want to feel down for me, so I'll go ahead and just drag it down to 100. Okay, um, so there I have my Y plot. Let me figure out what's going on with this graph. Okay, there it is. Um, there's my graph, and I only wanted it down to 100. Okay, so there's my, um, there's my correlation. 
versus my measured value. So either I could come in here to my estimated value and just start uh, moving these myself. You know, let's say I, I thought that this was uh, supposed to be 0. Um, 0. 0.5. You know, I could start adjusting these values. Um, that was maybe too far. Okay, so just by trial and error, I could adjust these until I would get uh, close to the actual solution. What we want to do is have an optimizer do this for us and be able to minimize a um, some sort of a uh, an error. Okay, so in this case, we're going to minimize. Um, uh, this will be a a normalized. Um, Let's see, this is going to be a normalized uh, error. And then we'll square that as well. Okay, so this is going to be uh, Y estimated minus uh, Y measured. And then we'll divide that by the measured value as well. Now, in this case, I don't have to put in the dollar signs. And then in total, it's going to be squared. Okay, and then I can then take this and just fill it down. Okay, and then what I want to do is sum up um, this column. Okay, so I just use equal sum and then hold down the shift key and then it will drag in this block. Or you can just select it with your mouse. Um, close parenthesis. Okay, so that's my sum of this normalized error squared. And so then I want to come into data, and I don't see solver on here. Um, if you don't see solver, let's go ahead and just add that. Um, so I'm going to come into File, and then select Options. Okay, and then down in the Add-ins, we're going to see a solver add-in, and go ahead and click uh, Go. Um, then select the solver add-in, make sure that's selected, and click OK. And it will go ahead and install the solver that we need for um, trying to minimize the sum of squared errors um, by adjusting these three values. Okay, so it um, it'll go ahead and install. Um, once that's done, then um, you'll have it in this uh, data tab. Okay, so you'll see solver over to the right, and um, what we want to do is set the objective D31, and we tr want to try to minimize that, not you know maximize. Don't set the value to zero. There's some noise in there, so it's not going to be a perfect fit anyway. Um, but then we want to try to change the cells C5 uh, to C7. Okay, and then also make sure this is um, unchecked. Make unconstrained variables non-negative. In this case, they're all going to be positive, but you don't want to put that in there, or you're not going to go below zero. Okay, and then you can click solve and keep solver solution. Okay, so in the end we had um, you know the estimated values of A, B, and C. You can see 0.54 versus 0.5, 1.98, and then 1.5. So in this case it did a very good job of, of fitting it. You can see um, over here in the plot that it, it kind of lines up. I'd added a little bit of um, a random variation to the measured values here so you can see they don't um, add up exactly okay so uh, that concludes um, this tutorial um, you can come here and uh, you know do this in Excel and then there's also going to be an example here in Python and then if you'd also like to try it in MATLAB as well the same example will be in all three